All right, okay, so um, craft laser is basically um, a 40 watt CO2 laser cutter. Uh, but before we jump into what craft laser is, let's just talk about what laser cutter is. Um, for a lot of uh, maker uh, spaces uh, or schools, universities, uh, you can see that um, you have this very good uh, uh, rapid prototyping tool called the uh, laser cutter. Um, so you can see that the, um, uh, for education, uh, if you want to do a rapid project fabrication, uh, you can see you can do a lot of like uh, toys, uh, education uh, uh, projects. So the, for, uh, if you want to do like uh, for tertiary education, you want to do like enterprise training, for instance, you want to train uh, 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 students uh, to able to run business, develop products, uh, and then you want to like uh, use a university facilities to allow them to test out uh, some of the things they can uh, sell. Uh, then that's enterprise training. So laser cutter is one of those tools that allows you to produce ready for market product versus um, conventional plastic 3D printer. Um, so like uh, uh, so we all know that uh, if you 3D print something, uh, I mean I'm talking about a normal uh, 3D printer, there's nothing much that you can actually sell to the market from the 3D printer. Whereas for laser cutter, almost when you produce the product, you can almost sell immediately. Um, then the, uh, uh, we're talking about STEAM education, we're talking about uh, science, technology, uh, engineering, arts, and uh, mathematics. So all these can be uh, what we call it the applied learning uh, 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 curriculum that students can apply the science knowledge uh, uh, or engineering knowledge into uh, actual product. Like for example, uh, right on the screen here, uh, teaching, that, teaching uh, kids like what is planetary gear, gear system, so we can just laser cut and they can design their own gear system. Uh, then the, um, uh, for those who are using this for home or for small business, it has its own uh, 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 use also. For instance, uh, I think I'm missing a picture here, but anyway, um, so uh, you can see that you can make things like crafts and gifts, uh, home and decor, this is actually a laser cut uh, 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 lamp, lampshade. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with laser cutting uh, from uh, chairs to table to kitchenware. Um, and you can sell this for a lot of money. So it's a big industry down there. So um, people who do fashion, like for example, uh, if you want to cut a uh, fabric, a leather, uh, so you can create apparels uh, for people to, to wear. So all these are also a good industry uh, powered by laser cutting. Okay, so, the, so what makes a uh, craft laser uh, so special uh, compared to the other laser cutter uh, is that um, despite the fact that Craft Laser is actually an open source project, it is actually uh, met every single uh, safety requirement in the industry. Um, just to name a few. Uh, for the safety wise, we are class one laser safety. Uh, for laser cut, for laser there are actually four levels of uh, uh, laser safety. Class one, class two, class three and class four. Uh, cutting laser are definitely a class 4 laser. So to, for a class 4 laser, by right, by right, you need to have license, right? You need an export license, uh, you need to have ownership license uh, for the user to use, you need to go through safety training uh, before you can use a, a, a class 4 laser cutter. However, uh, craft laser, despite the fact that it has a class 4 laser cutting power, it is certified as a class 1 laser. Class 1 laser is no different than your CD player. So you don't need any license, uh, you don't need any special training, uh, you don't need any uh, uh, safety features, like for example, uh, uh, safety the lock for the door, only students, only a uh, technician can open and enter into this room to use the machine, you don't need any of this. So you can see that we actually have the machine parked uh, just at the exhibit hall. Uh, Children or anybody in the public can just use the machine, it's okay, because it is a class one laser. Uh, so uh, that being said, it's not, uh, the machine is certified class one, not by me, but by UL. Uh, so UL is an uh, underwriter a laboratory. Uh, they are actually the US com listed company. Um, so they are one of the uh, few professional uh, certification company uh, that certified products. So we actually get them to certify our product. Um, the reason is that uh, we want to enter into the US market. So by, once we are certified by UL, we can enter into the US market uh, very easily. Um, so the second part of the safety 
is uh, what we call the uh, uh, NFPA 86 standards. Uh, that is the uh, National Fire Protection Association uh, uh, standard. So they set a list of recommendation in terms of how you should design uh, your uh, product such that it can meet fire protection uh, requirements. So for craft laser, uh, we actually develop in accordance uh, the equivalent standards of uh, incinerary oven. Means you actually uh, oven that actually burn have things burning inside. We are the only laser cutter that's designed according to that standards. So the uh, because if you were to go to the market, you take a look. Um, laser cutter do not have their own fire protection system. So craft laser is all the only laser cutter with its own fire protection system. Uh, the next part here is that why uh, uh, craft laser is that it's actually a flexible system. Uh, the whole thing is compact and portable. Um, the machine is weigh only less than 50 pounds. Uh, and that is actually to meet the uh, OSHA requirement. OSHA is uh, Occupation uh, Safety Hazards uh, uh, Association. That recommends that uh, the maximum weight a man can carry is 50 pounds. That's why your check-in luggage uh, cannot be more than 23 kg. That's the reason. Because the, the, the person who carry the luggage into the, uh, the, the cargo bay cannot carry one person more than 23 kg. That's why for our craft laser, it's designed to be only 23 kg. Uh, super light. Later, I'll show you a video of what I mean, uh, that uh, the portability of the machine. Uh, also, uh, last but not least, the, uh, our system is also all-in-one system. Normal laser cutter will need its own uh, smoke management system because when you do cutting, there's a lot of smoke. Uh, it needs to have its own air compressor uh, to provide air assist. Uh, without air compressor, your material will burn. You need to have compressed air to push the fire away from the material. Then lastly, you need to have a cooling system. So for craft laser, you don't need any external support system. It's all built uh, inside. So the, the important here is that uh, craft laser, despite the fact that it's an open source project, it is already uh, in full production. Uh, so these are all our happy customers that actually has the, uh, uh, the machines. So just kind of uh, give you a glimpse from uh, left to right. Um, so on, the, on your extreme left, top left corner, uh, hand corner, that's Korea. Uh, so you can see the machine that went to Korea. Uh, so there are our Korean friends. And uh, from there is our schools. So yeah, these are some of the school maker space that actually own the machine. Uh, and then at the uh, bottom uh, left, uh, that is, uh, you can see students using the machine themselves, right? And uh, right in the center, this, you'll be surprised that this is actually, actually a Singapore library. So we actually brought the machine into a library to run a workshop. So this is a testament to how safe the machine is. Uh, so other things, uh, and more schools, more happy teachers. Uh, so uh, we're also doing a lot of exhibits just like we're doing now. Uh, this was done in um, uh, Singapore uh, during the Mexican uh, uh, National Day uh, Festival. So we can see that a lot of kids like, really love the machine. Um, and as a part of a publicity stunt uh, down here, this is actually a restaurant or a hawker center, a like coffee shop. So we just bring the machine there, laser cut something for the, um, uh, for the customers. So, the, so basically what I'm trying to uh, show you here is that uh, craft laser is not just a concept. It's not just a prototype. It is an open source project that is in full production, delivered and proven uh, by it, our customers that it is a, a product that works. Sorry, let me just click. I think I missed out the slides. All right. So to, uh, before I jump into why uh, uh, about open source, I'll just show you some video. Oh, I just upload the HTML, don't worry. Okay. Down here. Just go in the team, then we just upload the HTML. Then, then now it's, yeah. 
No, it is not. PC lies again. Yes. You can see ghosts? So uh, we actually brought this to Komangan. So this is the second time the craft laser has been in Thailand. Uh, the first time was in uh, Komangan. Um, so we actually fly the machine uh, to Koh Samui. Then from Koh Samui, we actually take a motorcycle. Uh, and then after that, we bring it uh, on a boat ride all the way to Komangan. Yes, I need a beer every, every time. So you can see it's really 23 kg. So, uh, so it's a village. So uh, what we did here is that uh, uh, as part of the, uh, uh, the good thing about open source is that I'm willing to share the schematic so that they can service the machine themselves. So that is the, uh, uh, again, uh, one example of uh, uh, the portability. So I'll show you a second video. Uh, this is me uh, in Singapore uh, delivering the uh, machine to, uh, uh, to the customer. And you can see how easy it is to just put in the car and just take it out. Sorry, I think my hair was longer then. <laughs> um, so you can see, you can just slide this along on the floor. You don't really carry. And you can see this is a small car. It's very easy for us to just put behind the car booth. It's designed to be like that. And then to take out, it's also very easy. Yeah. And before that, actually, we actually climbed the stairs with the machine. So this is a business owner. So they actually do a perfume business. They are using the, uh, the laser cutter to do the packaging for their products. So, the, uh, so you can see that the, uh, the, the product has been quite well proven. Uh, so whatever that we set on the design criteria for the machine to be like uh, portable, safe, so we met all those criteria. So we actually launched an Indiegogo campaign uh, back in 2018, uh, June. So, and the campaign completed in uh, end of July. And we make delivery uh, in May, and we com uh, May this year. And by July, 2019, we completed 100% of all our local and overseas uh, uh, commitment. So the whole process is only one year. So the, and this is only made possible because of open source. If we do not have adopted open source as the way, the model that we produce and develop a product, there's no way uh, we are able uh, to push out a product in one year, including certification. So the, so, uh, so in a way, in this open source uh, 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 forum, uh, so what exactly is Craft Laser have to do with open source? Um, I just want to share my experience in the journey of uh, bringing the uh, Craft Laser into the market. What are the actual experience why open source is so useful uh, to develop own products? So the first point here is that uh, open source lower the barriers for product development. Uh, and also for production. The reason why it lowered the barriers, number one, you do not have to reinvent the wheels. 
though there are software, firmware, electronics uh, uh, component that already has been proven by the community over many years. So there's no need for you to reinvent the wheels. Uh, so you should always integrate open source solution or open source uh, 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 development into your product. And in so doing, uh, what happened here that the, the, uh, it minimizes a lot of your program risk and the cost that comes with the risk. Uh, so this is why it lowers the barrier. And also from the perspective of your technical uh, background, if I were to develop the software from scratch, I'm not a software engineer. If I need to develop electronics from scratch, I'm not an electronics engineer. In fact, I'm not even an engineer. But without being any background, through open source, I can develop a product from scratch. So I don't care whether it's the mechanical design, I don't care whether it's the electrical design, electronic design, firmware design, I have to do this myself. It's a one-man show. So uh, this is only made possible because of open source. So remember, I do not have a team of engineers. It's just me, right? So the next point here is that um, just because the fact that you can you can able to run your project so lean without so many uh, uh, overheads in terms of cost, you can now do what I call a competitive pricing. So the uh, at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you want to make the you want to lower the you want to lower the cost, increase your profit margin, or you want to lower the selling price and benefit the customer. So for me, I choose to benefit the customer. So what happened here is that Quad Razor is six times cheaper than your average laser cutter in the market. Uh, the uh, next point is that uh, as an open source project, uh, the good thing here is that once your product is open source by design, it always have growth potential. Uh, this is in the DNA of open source. So which means that as a product, I want to increase more features, it can be done easily. As compared to, let's just say, I use an example, if you buy a very fanciful washing machine from Samsung or from LG, so you try to upgrade that washing machine, it's not going to happen, right? But what if the Samsung uh, 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 fancy smart uh, uh, washing machine is an open source project? Can it be upgraded? Answer is this, for sure. So what we did here is that uh, in our products, we try to make sure it's open source just because also that it can give us growth provision and potential. Uh, last but not least, in the way you saw on the video, uh, it can be open source allows you to integrate uh, into your servicing solution just because of the fact that you have no problem with IP rights. You can now publish all the firmware, you can publish all the uh, schematics so that in a way when I go to the, the, the customer, I can teach them how to use and how to service and that's it. I don't have to find myself servicing the machine or force them to use my service to service the machine. They can service the machine themselves. So that actually uh, gives you an advantage against other professional company that force them to buy their servicing package. Okay, if not, then the, uh, uh, that's uh, all I have in terms of uh, what uh, Cloud Laser can do. It's more importantly here that if you're interested, please come over to the uh, booth to can do uh, uh, a quick demonstration and run through. I think that's easier. Uh, if not, I'm ready to take the question from the floor. Uh, right now, it's uh, uh, 3,500 USD, uh, thereabout, excluding uh, uh, shipping. 